Breaking and entering is a surefire way of catching the attention of the local lawman, wherever you are. Here in Germany, they take a very dim view of anyone caught trying to steal someone else's property. German officers used to use old-style handcuffs like these. However, they suffered from significant design problems. One serious problem was that they could injure the suspect, and allegations of police brutality are something all police officers are keen to avoid. Secondly, if the cuffs were put on upside down, they were awkward to unlock. And thirdly, a suspect only needed a simple paperclip to open them, and there isn't an officer anywhere in the world who would be happy about that. So it's clear the old-style cuffs weren't up to the requirements of modern policing. But what's the solution? Well, a complete redesign was called for. The sharp steel arms had to be replaced with more comfortable restraints, and the connecting chain improved with a sophisticated rigid central bar. Here's how that theoretical design became a real prototype. This is a CNC mill, or computer numerical control mill. It has a memory chip that stores the design. Drill heads are then directed to carve out that exact shape, in this case into an aluminium block. This system wouldn't be cost-effective in mass production, but it is very useful to make a prototype which can then be put through various tests. An air nozzle blasts away the metal fragments as the heads spin at over 20,000 revolutions per minute, cutting through the solid metal. When the mill has finished its job, one half of the handcuff prototype is clearly visible. But next to a finished version, it's clear there's still some work to be done. As well as an upgraded locking mechanism, the new cuffs will also feature more comfortable, redesigned restraints. A mold is needed to make the new rubber covering that will protect a suspect's wrists. They use the CNC mill once more to create an exact model of a finished rubber-coated arm. This is placed in the orange box and a silicon gel is poured around it. The box is placed into a vacuum chamber where the gel is bombarded with pulses of air. This bursts any bubbles in the gel, causing it to envelop the arm completely. This is important for the next stage. The gel is left to solidify, and once it's hard enough, it's sliced in half. The model arm is removed, creating a mold. The slightly smaller metal arm of a new cuff is inserted, ready for its rubber coating. A pipe is attached and the casing is returned to the vacuum device which has been loaded with a container of liquid rubber. It's poured in, filling the space between the metal arm and the silicon mould. By filling this gap, the designers create a safe rubber barrier which protects suspects from the kind of injuries that could be caused by the bare metal. With the arm finished, the construction of the internal locking system can be completed. A variety of extras have been added to address the old problems. These nubbins can be used to lock the cuff arms. This way they can't be over-tightened. Old-fashioned cuffs could be easily undone with a paperclip, but the use of three locking levers has made the new model much harder to pick. And another problem that law enforcers faced has also been cleared up. The locks are accessible from both sides, meaning the cuffs can never be put on upside down. So, a complete makeover means this new style of manacle is easier for police officers to use, and safer for any suspects restrained in a pair of the latest high-tech police handcuffs.